It's your boy Japanese Tutor, and we're doing another Bishop Endgame video. And we're gonna pick up where we left off last time, and we're gonna go right into an exercise in the Never I Can See's Endgame Manual. Now, if you want that book, I have books that I recommend down below, so just go ahead and click that link. Uh, that is an affiliate link, um, so I get money <laughs> if you do decide to purchase the book. And it's a, honestly a great read. So, let's go ahead and do we're gonna go and set up the position so let's set up the position which is the exercise bam do analysis let's clear the board and so the exercise is this is like one of the uh theoretical themes uh, or positions that you will encounter in this. And you should know how to end this end game. Okay, so uh, it is white to move. White to move. How do you win? Okay, this is an exercise, so the answer is not in the book, but I, since I, I kind of know the answer already, um, yeah, try, try yourselves. Pause the video right here if you want to solve it by yourself. If not, we're just going to continue. Okay. Um, so the best method is you want to play bishop to e5. Right? Now, this is all about controlling squares. So look at the controlled squares. The bishop is not controlling this square. Right? The king controls this square. So it's a blockade. The pawn controls that square. The king, and I'll highlight these in a different color. Maybe, maybe not that color. Maybe, mm, maybe that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the king. If I right click like that, it's okay. Let's let's just make it blue. Okay. So the king cannot go to these squares. It's too far away from the pawn. So let's mark those. These are the squares the king cannot go to. These are the squares that you control. Um, so the squares that you control are going to be in red. Right. And you also control that square. So you're kind of making a blockade. So now that you understand this, you understand that these squares, one, two, three, four, where the king can move, the knight is kind of, it's trapped. Okay. So the king goes here. Okay. The king goes here, and now they're attacking our bishop, right? But remember that we control these squares, and they cannot, they cannot go, uh, oops. they cannot go to these squares, right? So if we can prevent Black's king from going anywhere, we win. So the answer is bishop to d4 blocking the king from going here and here making them go to the mind square that we had set earlier okay the knight can move yes but we're just going to take it and promote the king takes we take here 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 and we get a queen and we win pretty easy example but definitely inst instructive like that can happen okay chess is tom thank you so much for coming in okay so we're gonna go into the lesson so we're gonna learn about knight and pawn versus the bishop okay so we're gonna set up the position right now and from there we're gonna read what the text has to say for us so bam there's a knight here king here Okay, so the bishop is a strong piece, and this is what the text has to say. The bishop is a strong piece, sometimes capable of preventing a pawn from queening even without the king's help. Okay, so what's the move here? So the move that the text recommends is bishop to e8. Okay, 
let's do that again. It is black to move. Bishop to e8. White threatened interference with knight c6. So before they threaten here so they can push twice. Okay, so bishop e8 first. If they go here, obviously we're going to take it. It's a draw. Knight to d7. King g2. King d8. Bishop. All the way over here. G6. <laughs> bishop g6, sorry about that. King e7. Bishop f5. Knight c5. Threatening interference again. And bishop c8. So we can see like it kind of like loops around. So if you're threatening interference, I go ahead of you. If you try to block it and interference. So now, now that we know this defensive technique, now we know how to attack. So if you're in the position where you have the pawn and the knight, you know exactly what to go for. So try to use it in one of your games. Okay. Black was saved, first of all, because the pawn had not yet reached the seventh rank. And second, because the bishop's diagonal was sufficiently long. Five squares. Knight and king are only capable of inter, um, intercepting two squares apiece, which leaves the fifth square free, so, right? So the king can only hold two squares, and they can only hold two squares. So that means that, unfortunately, uh, if you have five squares, then you can't attack all of them, and the bishop is safe. If we were to move the position one file to the left, so let's go ahead and move that position. And let's set, set that one up. And we're going to move it one file to the left. So over here. Oh, sorry, one file to the left. It's like your other left Japanese tutor. Okay. So here, it is black to move. Bishop d8. Knight f4. Oops, sorry. The king is not on the board. Let's put the king somewhere. Uh, knight f4. King f2. Knight e6. Holding down these squares. Bishop a5. King a6. And now the king can hold these two squares. And the knight can hold these two squares. So now the bishop has to leave the diagonal. And you win. Because of promotion. These examples show us that the two basic uh, techniques for promoting the pawn. Driving the bishop off the diagonal and interference. If the bishop can't handle the job on its own, which is what happens most often, then the outcome depends upon the position of the defending king can it prevent the bishop from being interfered with or driven off let's see so they're going to give us an example right here so there's a white king right here on here 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 bishop here and then the king is over here so with the king at h1 uh a1 b1 white would win if the king were here or here, one of these two squares, white would win. But by king, the king would play king to d5, king c4, and then play b5, a6, b7, and then this diagonal is a little bit too short for this bishop. Because you only have four squares, right? And we've learned this. The knight, the knight is covering this square and this square, and the king would cover these two squares. Oops, not that one. Okay. So, all right, and thank you so much for the follow. But here, or with the king's help, um, black, black's king is in time to help the bishop. So the way you do this is bishop d5. King to c3. King c5, king d3, 
King B5. King E4. King A6. King D5, King B7, King D6, and it's a draw. Now note black's accurate move. If we played A3 first, like let's say after King to uh, D5 when we play King A3, trying to prevent them from coming to B5. King C4. Okay. King to C4. Uh, and then followed by King A4, King C5. This is how white wins if the king is on A2 in the starting position. Okay. And we're just going to... So, win here. Okay. And if, okay, so now, like, where, where does the king go? So, basically, if you're asking yourself a question, where does the king go? What do we do? So, if we try to play, we can't play here, we can't play here. If we leave the diagonal, it's going to promote, right? So, now the king is in Zugzwang. He has to leave, and then bam, bam, bam. Very easy, and they can't get there in time. And yeah, good game. <laughs> okay. Now let's say what happens if wait oops. Let's say this pawn's here and let's put this king here. Okay, let's say what if the king is on let's say the king plays king to b3. After king b5, king b3. Hoping for king c5, and then we have a4, and then they're in Zugzwang. So basically, these two squares are the corresponding squares, or mind squares, if you will, and that's in a previous video. Uh, when white's uh, the one in Zugzwang, then knight to d4, check, king b4, knight to e6, knight e6, bishop a5, and then king c6 threatening the interference, and they can't stop the interference. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So that, that's uh, really easy. And if we have any questions, nope, no question. So we're gonna move on to the next one. Um, this title is the bishop is superior to the knight. And one of the concepts is cutting off the knight. So let's put the king here. Black is the one with a knight in this example. And this is an example that happens a lot in play and people don't seem to realize it, that if the knight is on the rim, it is dim. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite techniques by far because you just assert your dominance over the knight. So bishop e5 in this case, oops. Bishop e5. King to e7, and this is an easy win. It has to move back somewhere. Um, King e6, King c6, promoting. Captures e5. Yeah. And that's just winning. Sometimes it's not necessary to arrest the knight. It's enough to cut it off from the main theater or of conflict. For example, from the past pawn, as in the following example. So let's go into the following example. So let's play here. The king is here. And then we have a knight here. And then we have a bishop here. No knight here. And this is perfect. OK. So here it is white to move. And this is um, Goldberg versus Solution, USSR, the Soviet Union in Moscow, 1949. So here, the best move is h4. After h4, gh, gh. Knight e5, 
and bishop f5. And as we can see, wow. Are you sure h4, h4? Ah, oh, that's so interesting. Okay. So I thought that we we're losing this pawn, but this is on purpose. <laughs> Okay, so um, after bishop f5, uh, the bishop deprives, and this is from the text, deprives the knight of the important squares g4 and d7, which it would otherwise use for the fight against the h-pawn. It is true that the knight can immediately remove this pawn, but then it comes under arrest. Knight f3, king f2. Captures on h4. Bishop e4, arresting the knight. And you can say, hey, he can go to g6, but we're going to take this and then push the pawn. It's only two squares away from promotion. So now that we have arrested the knight, we can then take it. So what happened in the game was king c7. Whoa, not that king to c7. Uh, um, so king c7. King to g3. Knight g6. Takes takes f7 and they resigned so now um this is a really cool section it's called the tragic comedy that really really strong players are brought down to the mortar world and said hey they make mistakes too uh bykova and volpert uh this is the ussr 1951 and i'm going to set up their position So that, that, that was kind of a cool, like, I'm like, oh, you're losing a pawn. Is this great? But then, yeah, we're losing a pawn, but we're getting a knight after it. So nice technique. So, knight, and there's a bishop, and then there's two pawns. And here it is black to move. So black made the move, knight e8. A mistake that's hard to explain. Um, almost any other retreat by the knight would have led to an uncomplicated draw. Now black loses. King g5. Knight g7. King h6. And black resigned in view of uh, knight e8. And now the, it's stuck. So I would just play g5. And the knight can't go anywhere. And... You're losing this pawn, so let's just put that position on the board. Right, so you're in Zugzwang. The knight can't go anywhere. Right, and you have to move, right? You can't pass the turn, so if you move here, say your king moves here, I'm going to take the pawn and just win. And if you move here, I'm going to take the pawn and I just win. So very, very nice technique, and I don't know why he played knight e8, but definitely the wrong, the wrong idea here. Okay. Hey, JJ, what's up? And thank you, White Lightning, for being here. I really appreciate it. So the next one, and this is the one we're going to finish off on, it's fixing the pawns. It is useful to fix enemy pawns on the squares where they may be attacked by the bishop. In this case, either the king or the knight will be tied down to their defense. Okay, so let's set up the position that they're talking about. Bam, 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 and then two pawns here. Perfect. Okay. So it is white to move here, and in order to make progress, uh, white must bring uh, her king to the queen side. But this will be met by the black king coming to d5. For example, if king f2 here, they're going to play g6. King e2, thank you so much for the follow. King e6, king d3, king d5, draw. Okay, so one of the most important methods of converting one's advantage in end games, and not just in end games, is the principle of two weaknesses. 
sometimes it is impossible and i'm gonna do this patreon lesson um april the last sunday in april so check it out i'm gonna do a lesson on this as well um the principle of two weaknesses sometimes it is impossible to win by working only one part of the board in such cases the attacking side strives to create a second weakness in the enemy camp or to exploit one which is already exist by attacking the second weakness and then if necessary returning the attack to the first weakness the attacker succeeds in breaking down and eventually overcoming the enemy's resistance so h4 an excellent positional move stemming from the principle of two weaknesses the vulnerability of the h6 pawns prevents white uh, black's king from heading towards the center but how then is she to meet the advance of the enemy king to the queen's wing so g6 h5 g h g h white's position is now one which is great it's cool <laughs> King F6, B6, Knight B7, Bishop F8, King G5, Bishop G7. King captures H5, Bishop captures E5. The H5 pawn is gone. But now the king must defend another vulnerable pawn, the one at f4. King g5. King f2. And for now, white's king cannot penetrate the king side. King h3 does nothing because it's just knight a5. So their two weaknesses are this here, this here, and actually this is a liability as well. Okay, so king f5, bishop g7, attacking the weakness, h5. King g5 in this position is met with king e2. When the h pawn must advance anyways, and after um, h6, h5, white changes her plan and decides the outcome on the king side. Right? So. Let's see what happens here. So instead of that, they played here. And then now king g2. Knight c5. Really can't leave the defense of the queen square. So knight c5, bishop f8. And after bishop f8, knight b7, going back. King h3. And now we get into some really, really nice positions. King h3, king g5, bishop e7 check, knight f5 here. Black resigns since her king cannot simultaneously defend the pawn on h5 and f4. There can be no help from the knight either, as before it is tied to the queen side. Meanwhile, throughout this endgame, white's bishop remain very active. So they can't defend these two weaknesses, and this is a problem, and also this is a problem. So very, very nice uh, in-game technique. Thank you for hosting as well. And that is uh, my time here uh, for the lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, watch the whole series if you haven't. It's very, very instructive, and I have a whole bunch of video on pawn endgames, and I'll link you guys uh, by video card to the other videos that I explain the corresponding squares. For now, that's all from me, and thank you so much, and thank you so, so much for supporting on the Patreon, the, um, and for buying books through my links. <laughs>